I want to um, come back a little bit um, when it comes to the, the process of developing an idea. Um, because you've mentioned that it's very often for creators, including yourself, to work alongside other people and to develop ideas together. Um, can you walk me through that as well? Because I can imagine it's, it's quite difficult to first find a person who properly understands your concept and what you want to achieve with your idea. And then the whole dynamic in terms of, you know, you both working towards perfecting a certain concept can be quite challenging. And I guess it takes effort to, you know, sort of um, adjust yourself to that. Well, if we're talking about developing an idea into, uh, you know, something that, that can be made, that, that process, you know, for me, I always like taking the, the simplest of little questions and uh, turning it into the foundation for, you know, the, mm -hmm. the whole, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I don't want to give away any, any secret recipes for, you know, my Coca-Cola or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, what I'll say is, just the the little germ of an idea you you see a road sign mm -hmm. like okay here's one that i can give you okay so uh ivan ramey sam's brother and i mm -hmm. were over at my mentor uh bill vincent his house and we decided to go for a walk and a little ways down the road cuz bill lived on a lives on a farm uh in mid michigan uh, like 10 acres and what have you. And uh, so we're walking down a road that's not really uh, populated, but on the corner was a sign that said future home of whatever, whatever funeral parlor. Wow. And we're like, well, or whatever, whatever funeral home. Mm -hmm. And we were like, well, this is a really weird place to put a funeral home, you know? And then we just started like, cause our, our brains work this way. Well, you know, what if, what if it was nefarious? What if it was for a different reason? You know, what if they're building this, you know, as a cover for something or, you know, whatever. And then it was like, okay, well, what would that cover be? And it was like, okay, well, what if it's, you know, this, this, and this, and, then he would say, well, what if it was this? And then we would be like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, eventually by the time we made it back to the house, we had an idea for a movie called The Funeral Home that we changed its name after that. But we had basically a generic uh, overview of what could be a pretty, pretty interesting screenplay. Mm -hmm. So when we got back, we told Bill, uh, the professor the idea and he's like well yeah let's do it so we hashed wow. out over the next couple of weeks a treatment and then you know bill wrote a first draft of our treatment then i rewrote that and then it became ivan and i over the next two years meeting you know every other week uh where, like I told you, he would say, okay, well, let's do this. Let's mm -hmm. do this. Take this character and do this. And, you know, and it all started with walking down the road and seeing a sign in a vacant lot. To elaborate on that, for me specifically, when I have an idea, what I do now is I will write down a bunch of things that I think have to be in this movie. It, you know, and just lay out some parameters. Then I know at the very least there's the main character and a couple of characters that they need to interact with. So I'll have that kind of foundation. Then what I'll normally do is I'll make a poster <laughs> of the movie. Oh, wow. Interesting. Like all these different posters. Uh, well, Seven Cells was done by... Uh, a friend. Uh, I've done a couple other ones prior to that. 
but uh, you know, this one, this one, it becomes a kind of a creative moment for me where I can get a visual going for the type of movie that I want and uh, gives my brain some time to like digest everything and, and maybe start formulating some stuff. Then I'll write a beat sheet. Mm-hmm. And a beat sheet for me is basically, you know, you have the the structure of the opening scene and the catalyst and the end of the first act, beginning of the second act, the midpoint of the second act, the turning point that propels you into the third act. And so I'll 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 just write out this numbered thing where I'll have like one through five and then inciting incident, then six through 10, then, and it's not hard and fast. You don't have to stay to that. It just gives me a structure to then go, okay, the big thing that's going to propel this into the second act is when so-and-so does this. Mm -hmm. So I'll write that in there. Then I have from the opening scene, I got to come up with what's what's the incident that, you know, caused the whole movie to get started. My guy walks wow. into a bank and somebody starts robbing it. And now my guy is in the middle of, you know, so you have that. Then I know I have to go from that to the turning point, And I've got roughly 18 pages to do it. Wow. Okay, so I need to hit this and I need to hit this and I need to hit this. That's how I like to lay out the beat sheet or a more formulaic treatment so that when I start writing the screenplay, I don't have any major hiccups. Like some people like to just start. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> and for me, like Chuck can do that. You know, mm-hmm. Chuck Farr, the Navy SEAL guy, he can start on page one. He may have some mental notes. He may have some note notes. uh, But, you know, there are people who who just go. They just start. And then there's people like me who I really like. I like to know how I'm going to get there. You know, so I spend as much time on that beat sheet that some people do on just writing the screenplay. Because I, you know, I'll flush a lot of things out. I'll make sure I have, you know, there's key dialogue that I want people to say in this scene and in this scene and in this scene. And, you know, I'll make sure it's all there. But the cool thing is, is it helps me to not get slowed down Mm -hmm. by if I'm, if I'm just doing the screenplay and I hit a roadblock, I'm, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing a beat sheet, I can just say, okay, I'm I'm stuck I'm stuck here for a second, but I do know that to start the third mm. act, I want this to happen and this to happen and this to happen. Then I can work on that a little bit, and then I'll have some parameters to go back and say, okay, I now know this guy's going to live. These two people are not, whatever, whatever. So from getting here to here, I got to go to this place, this place. This has got to be said. These people need to meet, and. For me, that's that's the process. Wow, that's so interesting. You know, I've always been trying to like just imagine what this process is like. So it's it's very fascinating just to um, to hear all of that from you. Um, okay, so in terms of you know this sort of creative process, we have you know uh, the start, you know everything beginning from a simple idea to you know, to the production and uh, editing and so on. For you personally, what would you say is the most satisfying part of the process? Like what brings you the most joy of, and I guess it's everything all at once with different reasons and so on and so forth. But mm-hmm. like, what are, you, what are the, you know, the pinpoints that you can give? Well, I believe it was Hitchcock that said, his his favorite thing was coming up with the idea and writing it 
everything after that was work. Mm -hmm. And he's right, you know, making a film is hard work and, or, you know, getting it in the can, so to speak. Then post-production is tedious and hard work. And every time I do it, <clears throat> I say, this is my favorite or this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Again, I think the fact that, you know, for the first five movies, I was, you know, one of the writers, you know, I usually collaborated with either Bill Vincent, the MSU professor, mm -hmm. or my friend Eric F. Hill, who's one of the the most sought after grips in Hollywood now. Um, we did a lot of the early stuff together. And uh, that process was always great because you're you're on your own time, you're you're with your buddies, you're creating, you're coming up with something. Uh, there were challenges, you know, especially in the early days, trying to learn how to write something uh, that's at least uh, on a certain level, you know, not a lot of people, you know, the first thing they ever write is, is the greatest thing they'll ever write. Uh, so, you know, that process was, was always enjoyable, <clears throat> but then getting into filming, especially in the early days, it's almost, you know, it's, it's like combat. It's like, it's like combat in the sense that you're with this tight unit of people. Once, once it starts, you can't stop. Like mm. you, you don't, you can't just throw your hands up in the air and say, well, you know, you know, you have 18 days or whatever your, your schedule is and you have to shoot six pages a day or seven pages a day, you know, whatever the number is, you have to do it. You can't stop. There's, there's money at stake. You know, even in the early days when it wasn't a lot of money, there were still people that were volunteering their time or they needed something out of this too. So they're, they're working with you and, and whatever the case is, after a couple of days and you haven't slept and, you know, you're, you're, you're away from home and you got your blinders on. Okay. I, I got, today has got to be this. And, you know, by the end of all of that, you're so tight with those people. And when it's over, it's such a, a bizarre feeling um, that it's it's really hard to express the emptiness of when production wraps because wow. these people are now your family, mm -hmm. uh, and then you got to go into to post production, and that's a very very uh, painstaking process of you know hundreds and hundreds of of scenes and shots and choices and hours and hours and hours of footage to go through. And you're putting this puzzle together. Uh, and then once the puzzle's together, then you got to, you got to deal with the dialogue. You got to get that, you know, either synced from another source or you got to start crossfading and blending and, you know, mixing and all that stuff. Then you're dealing with sound effects and atmosphere and then you're dealing with score and you know there it's it's that's such a daunting task to know okay i have a blank editing timeline and someday down the road i've got to have a hundred minutes of finished movie wow <laughs> but you all you can do is is tackle it you know, yeah. you do a minute this day, you do two minutes the next day, you do, you have a great day and you do four minutes and, <laughs> you know, eventually you're like, oh, I'm a third of the way into the rough edit. And then you start hitting those milestones and then you start seeing things that are like exactly how you wanted it. And those are the little nuggets that help you keep going. Thank and, you, yeah. you know, like with Ophelia, uh, Sitting, I did a theatrical mix, a surround sound mix. Oh, wow. And sitting in the theater with 50 people 
that were all my friends and, you know, some people that were involved with it and what have you and mentors and whatever. And watching them watch and listen to the finished product was what it was all about.